Hi, I'm Walt and this is Delta Astrophotography. When you're processing your deep sky images, you may notice that the stars get bigger and brighter as you stretch your data to bring out the faint details in a nebula or galaxy. There are lots of ways to get around this and one of the most popular is a free program called Starnet++ that completely removes the stars from your image so you can process your deep sky image and your stars separately and then recombine them later if you want. Now the creator of one of my favorite Photoshop plugins Russell Crowman, I believe, uh, who created Gradient Exterminator has come out with a new plugin called Star Exterminator that removes stars as well. And he claims it's even better than Starnet++. And now it does come with a price tag of 60 US dollars. So is it really better? Well, I'm gonna compare them side by side and we'll see. And then I'll show you a little bit of my Star Exterminator workflow. So let's get right into it. All right, so we're looking at the North America Nebula and the Pelican Nebula. All I've really done so far is I've gotten my initial stack from Deep Sky Stacker, did a stretch, another stretch for the star mask, and then I balance the colors with levels. If you look on the right side, you'll notice that the stars get really thick and they also have kind of a greenish color to them, and I don't like that. These are some of the reasons why you might want to remove the stars and work on everything separately. So let's go ahead and do that now. First, we're going to do it in Starnet++. To do that, all you have to do is save a copy in your Starnet++ folder. Mine is on my desktop. So I'll just go to File, Save as Copy. Let's go to my desktop, Starnet folder. I'm just going to call it North America Copy, save as a TIFF file. And I'm going to make sure that Layers is unchecked. I do not want to save the layers. And I'll just hit Save. Now we navigate to our Starnet folder, and to run Starnet++, we find the copy of the photo we just saved, North America copy, and I just drag it over the top of RGB Starnet++ and let go. Now this will start up, and it will run and remove the stars. I've already done this process actually, so I'm gonna go ahead and X out of this. One of the reasons I'm Xing out is because this process takes 30 minutes on my computer. And uh, yeah, that takes a while. So just keep that in mind. And when it's done, it's gonna spit out a file called Starless, and we can just drag that right back into Photoshop. And there is our Starless image. Now let's look at how to do it with Star Exterminator. So I just need to go to Filter, RC Astro, and hit Star Exterminator. Go to the top and press OK. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let this process run. I'm gonna stop the recording and I'll be back when it's over. And we're back and that only took about 15 minutes, half the time of Starnet++, so that's a big win right there. Now let's look at the difference. This is Star Exterminator and this is Starnet++. You can barely tell a difference. On Starnet++, I can see a little bit more dustiness and maybe some grain and artifacts over here on this side where the stars were getting really thick whereas Star Exterminator is a lot cleaner. But for the most part, it's hardly noticeable. So it's hard to pick a real clear winner here. So let's look at another comparison. Here is a shot of the Pleiades. This is with Starnet++. I'm gonna go ahead and brighten this up so you can see what I'm talking about. With Starnet++, I see lots of little holes here where the stars used to be, some artifacts. And you can fix those by clicking this um, spot healing brush tool, change your brush size with the bracket keys and just come over here and click. Try to smooth that out. This process can take a while, it's very tedious. Now let's jump on over and look at Star Exterminator. I'm gonna brighten this one up too so you can see. This is a lot smoother. Just look at that. I don't really see any of those little holes. It's already either filled them in for me or I just didn't have to worry about that problem. This looks great. This is a very clear win for Star Exterminator. All right, now let's look at a Star Exterminator workflow. I have flattened this image and gotten rid of all those layers just for the sake of this video. You may or may not want to do that, but it is very important that you work from a copy. So if you flatten your image, hit Control J to make a copy, or if you've already had some layers over here, hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E all together to mix everything down and put a copy on the top. If you're on a Mac, that's Command, Option, Shift, and E. It's always good to work with a copy. And like we did earlier, 
We run Star Exterminator just by going to Filter, RC Astro, Star Exterminator, and we hit OK. It's so nice for this plugin to be in Photoshop. I don't have to do this outside of Photoshop in, in a separate program. I love that about this. Okay, now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and double click our Starless layer and name it Starless. That's important, it's gonna come in handy in just a second because now we're gonna make our stars only layer. I'm gonna go right here and turn our Starless layer off. Click on the last layer we did, right click it, and I'm gonna duplicate it. Now that that layer is selected, I'm gonna rename it stars only. And with that layer selected, I'm gonna to go to the top, to image, apply image. And here in the layer drop-down box, I'm gonna select starless. And our blending, I'm gonna come down to subtract and set our offset to two. And hit okay. Now we have a stars only image. Let's go ahead and work on it while we're sitting here looking at it. The stars look a little bit green. I don't like that, so I'm gonna to go to filter camera raw filter. I'm just going to move my tint from green to magenta a little bit. And that helps a little. I'm also going to go down to color mixer, make sure saturation is selected, and just bring greens down. Maybe a touch of the aqua down too. That, that's good enough. I'm going to hit OK. Now the next thing I'm going to do is shrink these stars a little bit because they've gotten a bit bigger since I did my initial stretches. So we're gonna go to select, color range, go up here and select highlights, and move our fuzziness up and range down till we can see a lot of stars in this little preview box. That looks good, I'm gonna hit okay. Now I'm gonna go back to select, modify, expand. Let's expand it by two pixels, I'm gonna hit okay. Now we're going to go to Filter, Other, Minimum. Make sure Roundness is selected here. I'm going to do a radius of 1.2 pixels. It looks good to me. I'm going to hit OK. Now let's hit Control D or Command D on a Mac. And there we go. The stars are a good bit smaller now. I like that. So let's move on. I'm going to click Show for our starless layer. Let's click on the starless layer and start working on that now. I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Command, Option, Shift, E on a Mac. And the first thing we can do is we can do another curve stretch. I'm going to hit Control, M. It's Command, M on a Mac. And just pull this up a bit. All right, we've brought out so much more detail already. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to hit Control, L. Command, L on a Mac to bring up levels. And we're just going to bring this slider here on the left over to the edge of the data just like that we can do this with the individual color channels as well go to red bring it in a bit green a little bit and blue we don't want to ever go past this data just kind of right up to the edge of it and there we go let's look at before after that looks awesome now I'm not gonna do a whole lot more. This is not a full processing tutorial, but another thing you can do is noise reduction in the dark areas of your photo, like these black areas, your background. Um, that's really handy when you have a starless image. So I'm gonna make another duplicate layer, Control, Alt, Shift, and E. And we're going to do the background noise reduction like this. I'm gonna hit Select, Color Range, make sure Highlights is selected, and adjust our fuzziness and range till the nebula is selected. There we go, I'm gonna hit OK. We're gonna refine that selection a little bit by going to Select, Select and Mask. Now up here I have, what do I have selected? Overlay. I'm gonna shift my edge out a little bit just to get a little bit more of that nebula in there. And then we're gonna feather it by 10 pixels. I'm gonna hit OK. So right now our nebula is selected, but we want the background selected. So I'm just gonna to go to Select and Inverse. Now everything but the nebula is selected, and that's what we want. We're gonna go down here, 
to add layer mask and click it. It has created a layer mask here where the nebula is in black and anything black is not going to be affected by my noise reduction. So I'm, this is very important. I'm gonna click back on my photo here instead of the layer mask. Very important you do that. Now, we're going to go to filter, camera raw filter. I'm gonna to go to detail right here. Just bring up our color noise reduction and our noise reduction a good bit. Now. In this preview window, it's looking like it's softening up and doing noise reduction on the whole image. But once we hit OK, it's only going to apply to the dark background areas because of the layer mask. OK, that's a good bit of noise reduction. I'm going to hit OK. And it's definitely cleaned up the background areas a bit. And you can do this more than once. But well, we're just going to stop for now. I'm going to hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E to create a new layer. And do our final little adjustment by going to Filter, camera raw filter I'm gonna click the basic tab up here I'm just gonna do maybe a little contrast just a touch a touch of texture and clarity just to kind of bring out a few more details maybe a hint of dehaze and a touch of vibrance as well and that that's really it I'm gonna hit OK now let's bring the stars back I'm gonna come down here to our stars only layer and I'm gonna drag it all the way to the top now where it says normal, this is our blending mode. I'm gonna change it to either screen or linear dodge. Now we can drop down the opacity just a little bit. I wouldn't go past 80, but this just kind of makes the stars a little dimmer. I'm gonna hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E. And there we go, that, that's about it. I can still see a little bit of noise here in this right corner where I, all those stars used to be. And I probably would have done that background noise reduction two or three more times to get rid of that. But for the purpose of this video, this is gonna be just fine. Now let's look at the before and after. This is before we used our exterminator. And this is after. Much better. Well, I definitely think Star Exterminator has the edge, but I still love StarNet++, and I'll probably be using that more in future processing tutorials. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of Star Exterminator and if you think you might be using it in the future. As always, thank you so much for watching. Stay spacey and good night.